Well, hello, Catherine. Welcome back. Good to good to chat again. Yeah, likewise, Simon. Good to hear from you. Good to chat. Now, when we last spoke, uh, you were the treasurer at Uber. Um, the world has changed a lot in that time. Where where are you now, and what's your current role? Yeah, certainly. Um, so, uh, a job change, of course, in in the last uh, eighteen months since we did last check in and, and speak. Um, I joined Palo Alto Networks in October of 2019. So that's been a big change since you and I last chatted. Um, I came in as the treasurer reporting into the CFO and it's been great, extremely busy amidst even in light of COVID in these last 15, 16 months. What would you say have been the highlights in the last 18 months, two years since we last spoke from a career perspective? Yeah, so um, one of the reasons why I joined uh, Palo Alto Networks was just the opportunity and, and seeing where they were in the market and, and their leadership in the cybersecurity space. And so there was an opportunity to join, come in and help uh, build out the, the treasury function, which I did. It's been very, very busy um, in my first 18 I guess almost 20 months um, since I've been at Palo Alto Networks, we, we did a $2 billion debt raise. Um, we stood up a captive finance organization, um, you know, especially in light of COVID and really wanting to ensure that we can support customers and help them think about maybe some concerns and cash preservations that they were doing. We wanted to be able to support and enable them. Um, so that's been very, very successful uh, since we stood that up about 14 months ago. Um, and then just the overall expansion of the team, you know, a lot of the stuff that I love to do and that I've spent a career in treasury, um, I've been lucky and fortunate to have a very supportive uh, management team to help me come in and, and do some of that build and, and expansion over the last 18, 20 months since I joined. Obviously, COVID-19 has changed the world dramatically. Have there been major challenges that would be outside of the norm during that time for, for you and the team? Yeah, certainly. So this is probably a commonplace across everybody that you come across, Simon. It's it's the hiring and the onboarding, right? So um, certainly we're a global company. We all know and understand how to lead global teams. And so many times we've had to uh, recruit, manage, lead, collaborate remotely. So certainly that was happening prior to COVID, but not in its entirety 100%, right? So I've brought on um, four new employees that uh, we interviewed, we onboarded, we recruited, and we've never, and yet we've never met them. Um, I report into a CFO that I've never met uh, in person. So certainly COVID has provided some challenges in terms of uh, collaboration, getting to know one another, um, the work that we've done, but it hasn't been a hindrance certainly in terms of us moving forward and, and doing all the things that we want to do, it's just different. And on the back of that, Catherine, do you think that will change the way that you operate moving forward, given that it has been successful? Oh, for sure. You know, so um, Palo Alto Networks, we have um, a program that uh, the company is advocating and, and speaking about around flex work. And so it's all around really ensuring that our employees uh, really choose the best way that they want to work, whether it's return full-time to office, full-time remote, or some sort of hybrid. Um, we've all been able to demonstrate that we can get our jobs done and we can do uh, what we can if we wanted to continue to work. Um, four folks that I hired in the last year uh, are remote-based. So I have employees that are in Texas, Colorado, Massachusetts, and then just as of last week in the UK. And so those are all remote-based workers that, you know, are coming in, great experience, great part of the team that we will just continue to hire and consider potentially remote-based workers to add to the team. One thing that, um, that the COVID has done uh, has obviously made networking and, and being able to recruit and doing all these things are, are a lot harder. How have you handled that side of the of your um, not your business, but you know the way that you operate around you know networking and, and being able to meet up with people and and uh, 
get out in the marketplace. Well, certainly less of that has happened. Uh, we very early on back in March of 2020, um, because I was just bringing on uh, new team members, because we were all moving to this remote work situation, we very early uh, set up 30 minute check-ins every Thursday afternoon. We called it our virtual happy hours. Uh, very early on, we started where many of us had a beverage of our choice in hand and we kept it very informal. It wasn't a staff meeting. Um, I would pass down and maybe we would talk about maybe something that was top of mind, but I really wanted to make sure that it was 30 minutes that the team could get together. We could talk, you know, whatever binge TV shows we were watching, anything that had happened. Um, maybe any company news, but we kept it very informal. I think that made a huge difference with the team still feeling connected. Um, you know, they could take a breather. We call it now VHH. It's gotten a little bit busier. So we just moved a couple of months ago to every other Thursday. Um, but it's a time that the team can just look forward to, to just see one another. Um, you know, I think on camera and, and video, re, you know, meetings, probably wasn't necessarily across the industry and across companies, what people were comfortable with. Um, funny enough, I was on a call yesterday. I was driving back. I had to run an errand. I dialed in um, from my phone and pre-COVID, that would have never like been strange. And I actually felt a little odd that I was only on my phone and not on you know, the call with full audio and camera as part of the meeting. But I, I think, again, that's that's something that will be here to stay for sure. And, and has there been anything from a treasury perspective that you found is hard to do remotely or that the team has, has um, struggled with or has it all sort of been relatively flawless? Um, I wouldn't say flawless. I think the struggle, um, you know, certainly if you think about the treasury function team, um, we do spend a lot of time with our banking partners, the relationships that we drive. So, you know, again, those of all we move that have been moved to, you know, video conferencing, uh, you know, we've tested the waters that we can actually do a large transaction and drive it without meeting uh, with our, our important bank relationships in person. But, you know, I think, especially in treasury, it is such a relationship driven sort of profession. Um, that you, you do miss a little bit of that connectedness in terms of um, building those relationships, making sure that the networking is there. Um, you know, we do the best we can uh, with the circumstances, but certainly that's, that's been a challenge. Not being able to get, you know, I've joked, I love being in meetings and standing up and standing up at the whiteboard and just drawing out what we're talking about or what we're trying to solve for. And I, I certainly miss that aspect of not being able to do that during these times. And I think it's one of those things that because you've got the relationships it's worked, it's going to be building those relationships moving forward, isn't it? That where the challenge comes and particularly for some of the younger folks. Yeah, you know, I, I, I think about the early career um, team members that we bring on. So you raise a good point. Um, I've been doing this for quite a long time. And so, you know, I had the security and the relationships and the network and the connections that I knew um, people within banking, within the company, um, vendors, you know, treasury vendors uh, to reach out to, to get my job done. But you, you're absolutely right. I think people earlier on in their career, um, it's a challenge because if you don't have that network that you can rely on, this has made it a lot harder. And I find, I mean, as a vendor, um, Catherine, I find it really interesting. I've had this conversation with many other vendors that conferences and, and these get togethers are really where, you know, you get to meet people and, and put a face to a name. And with all of those being cancelled and Zoom becoming the norm, it, and, and none, none of the virtual conferences that I've been a part of have done networking well. You know, it's, it's just not like being able to walk up to someone, you know, have a beer with them or, you know, have a coffee with them, whatever it may be. Um, so that side of it, I think we're going to see ramifications of in years to come, as, unless we can get that right again. Um, mm -hmm. So how have you sort of navigated that or have you just relied on the fact that you've got the relationships already? 
I, I think you're right. It's funny, I presented to our summer interns uh, a few hours ago, and it was about just my career and my journey. And, and I mentioned the fact that um, these conferences, um, certainly, you know, there's always uh, something very topical um, on the markets, interest rates, you know, financing, etc. the things that are really relevant. Um, and so hearing the speakers are always important and a good part of conferences or, or client events, but it's the networking aspect, right? When I know and I see um, the attendee list and I know that there's uh, former colleagues that I've worked with or just people I've known over the years, you know, that is the plus part of so many of these in-person events. Um, on the flip side though, Simon, I would say virtual conferences have been great for my team because, you know, sometimes it's costly and companies and, and leaders may not have the budget to be able to send three, you know, uh, several people to travel and to register for a conference. And so I'd say on the flip side, um, many of these conferences that were virtual didn't charge a registration fee. So that was great. And it really enabled more of my team to participate and attend you know, sessions that were relevant that they wanted to pop in and drop in and not feel like, okay, am I, can I go? Is it within our budget? And can I really afford to take two, three days out of the office to travel to those conferences? So I would say that's been you know, maybe a little bit of the silver lining and the, and the upside of, of what we had to move to in terms of virtual conferences. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think from a technical perspective, 100%, you know, it, it allows way more people to attend. The problem with these things, in my view, is the vendors pay for them. And if the vendors aren't getting any bang for their buck, the vendors aren't going to be there. And like, if you look at somewhere like the AFP, even they don't make that much money out of a virtual because they're not charging. So I, I just look at, I don't, I don't think that model is sustainable um, from a long-term perspective, but I totally agree with you from a practitioner point of view. It's mm -hmm. fabulous for everyone to be able to get that technical know-how, but it's finding a balance between getting value for the people that are paying for it and the, the people that are attending, I think. Agree. From, from the perspective of hiring, you, you mentioned obviously you've hired remotely um, and even someone from the UK, which is obviously very, very different time zone. Does that mean that you're opening up um, your treasury function to be sort of agnostic as to where people are or what sort of parameters are you working on there? Yeah, I, I don't have any set guiding principles or um, boundaries. Certainly, we're a global company. We just surpassed the 10,000 mark. Uh, so we are, you know, across the globe. Um, we need to think globally. We need to think about how we support our customers. Um, how do we think about centers of excellence? Um, ensure time zone differences that we can support any needs that you know the teams might need in the company um, that we support both on the treasury as well as the financing side. So but I think it's going to be the go forward is you know where's the greatest need, where's the greatest talent, and can I make it work in terms of where the need is for the work uh, in terms of where it should be done and and the candidates that we're seeing and considering for certain roles. I, I think we will, like I said, I think remote based is, is here to stay. And, and again, I just wanna make sure that we're thinking about it thoughtfully in terms of who needs to be at headquarters uh, here in the Bay Area. Um, there's probably always going to be a core strategic focus and the need to be close to the executives, maybe some of the other teams that we work with, like FP&A, like accounting, like legal. Um, but what else can we do um, across other regions that, you know, time zone differences, needs that aren't just HQ focused uh, here in California? And it, it, it makes absolute sense, Catherine. I think it's really smart because you're opening up such a bigger talent pool to be able to go to than just the Bay Area, which is obviously A, expensive and B, limited in, uh, in in the numbers you know you can you can really increase your uh, your pool by going uh, agnostic commute has Im computes have improved a little bit but I keep on hearing I, I'm still working a uh, hundred percent remote but I am hearing that the commute in the Bay Area is starting to get uh, a little bit harder and a little bit more like it was pre-covid so uh, certainly that is something that people that live here in the Bay Area always have to consider. And on the back of that, being able to, to perform the, the role that you have, have you looked at, 
different technology and, and process um, in order to be able to facilitate that? Yeah, what was one of the great things when I first joined Palo Alto Networks, uh, they had um, already put in place uh, certain technologies and treasury solutions. And so I spent my first 90, 100 days when I joined looking at what systems and solutions we had invested in. Um, we had done a good job picking certain ones across banking, cash management, foreign exchange. Um, it, hadn't been really fully integrated and, and honestly leveraged uh, to its fullest extent. And so we spent the better part of 2020, again, working remote under COVID, but it didn't stop us to consolidate uh, some of the solutions that we were doing, standing up a single platform TMS system, um, and then automating our global disbursements. The company had not yet automated its global disbursements outside of the US. And so um, I've been fortunate uh, to have a really good uh, team within the accounting function to help support as well as IT. Um, IT has, you know, our, our finance business partner and IT business partner, he has a whole team of a few folks that just focus on RPA and process automation. And so um, that's one of the huge highlights and what's been really great since I joined the company, um, that that is a focus. Um, and, you know, there's an investment and a commitment um, by management to ensure that we're thinking about scaling automation. Um, we have the support from IT um, to go and implement those, those technologies. And with COVID, do you think the the C-suite and, and you know, senior management view treasury and, and what is success uh, as a treasurer differently? Or has, has the, um, what, what they're looking for remained fairly much the same? You mean during COVID? Has, has that changed uh, yeah, so I, view? In terms of what is this, what makes a successful treasurer? Do you think that's changed with the fact that we're remote now and doing things differently? Or it's just an expectation that it's still the same, but we're just doing things differently? It's a good question. Um, I don't think it makes Treasury, my function, my contributions any more less relevant um, since COVID. Um, I think how we work and lead, certainly, um, you know, how effective we are um, sitting in front of my desk uh, every day uh, certainly has changed. I, so, no, I think to be a successful Treasurer irrespective of current environment, the new normal going forward remote hasn't changed. Um, my function, you know, I think is, is appreciated and understood uh, by the leadership in terms of what we can contribute and our, our capabilities. And so COVID didn't change that. Um, I think what has changed is more, um, you know, really making sure, especially if we're gonna continue to hire remote um, even though we return, I will, you know, plan on returning probably in the next four to six weeks uh, in probably a hybrid uh, sort of environment. Um, I think explicit um, definition of roles, um, objectives, um, reducing and eliminating any amb ambiguity, I think will be more important in terms of how I lead going forward. I think that will be uh, certainly a key in terms of um, my successes and, and being able to lead and, and grow the team and to be able to contribute overall. It's interesting, Catherine, I, I totally agree with you there. It's interesting because I think that people have to be better managers now. I think that your management um, ability is going to be a lot more under the spotlight because being able to do it remotely is, is far more challenging. And I think you, you're spot on there. It's almost like the CFO doesn't think anything less of treasury or what you need to do, but your role is exponentially harder because you're doing it all remotely. Um, so I think it'll be interesting to see how that plays out over the next couple of years for sure. Yeah, agree. Yeah, I, I think where I felt a little bit, you know, especially I joined, worked in the office for five months, then we we moved to kind of our current work structure. You know, what, what I've missed out yeah. is, you know, clearly within the CFO, org and function. I'm constantly meeting, speaking, emailing, working on projects and initiatives, um, mostly across the CFO organization. Um, I've 
I have been at a disadvantage because of the remote environment of just getting to know people across other teams, you know, maybe sales or engineering, you know, they aren't teams that I have to necessarily work with, uh, with like on an initiative, but, you know, you tend to volunteer to work on an employee group or leadership, um, you know, sitting in the cafeteria and you're having lunch with somebody who introduces you to somebody that, you know, that's, that's where I feel maybe that there's a bit of a disadvantage in terms of just my network within the company has been limited because of it. Catherine, it's always a pleasure to chat. Thank you very much for your time and your insights. I really appreciate it. Yeah, likewise. Great chatting with you. Thanks, Simon.